Oh, <laughs> not the star. <laughs> oh my out. gosh. You're insane. How did you end up at HSCC? Have you always worked with animals? Um, no. So I, uh, I moved here in probably three years ago um, from New York City where I actually worked in production on Broadway. Um, so it was a pretty, it's much different than what I did for most of my life. I went to college for theater, I went to high school for theater, um, but then once COVID hit, obviously the theater industry and Broadway shut down, um, and me and my partner, who was also in, worked on Broadway at the same time, moved up here um, to be with family, and we kind of, I jumped around in a different, couple different jobs for a while. Um, but then I found the customer care associate position uh, about a year ago, um, and I don't think that I will ever do anything else. Um, I probably will work with animals for the rest of my life. Um, I've never really been in a job or a position where I've ever felt so fulfilled and driven um, every single day, um, and like actually feels like I'm making like I like hands on the ground, boots on the ground, like difference with our community, which is really special. That's awesome. We got yeah. theater. Yeah. study theater. Um, I went to college in, uh, I'm originally from Ohio, so I uh, went to Kent State University uh, for college, and then I went to uh, Performing Arts High School in Cincinnati for high school. Oh, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> you, were, you were all in for a while. I was all in. It was pretty much like everything that I was going to be doing was like directing and producing. Um, but honestly, as successful as I was, um, I have never been like ha as happy as I've been working here and being with the animals, which sounds so cheesy, but it's like so true. Um, yeah, it was a very different um, kind of direction, but... It kind of made it made a lot of sense. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that for you. Um, what is your role here, and what are your like daily tasks? Yeah, uh, so I'm a customer care associate. So I work with our community members, um, and um, I do adoption counselings. I do animal care, social media, um, enrichment, medication. <laughs> pretty much what everyone needs me to do. Um, we all kind of pitch in and do everything around here for each other, um, which is awesome. Um, so daily tasks really are just like cleanings. Um, if like morning animal care volunteers need help, uh, we'll jump in and clean cat enclosures or dog enclosures, take dogs out on walks, um, answer emails, phone calls, all of that really boring stuff. Um, and then in the afternoon, when our lobby and our adoption floor is open, um, I'll do counselings, which basically means just like going over behavioral and medical information for our friends here, um, answering any questions about care from our community members, um, finding, helping people find like the right dogs, things like that. Um, so it's much more, the second half of my day is much more um, community facing um, and working hands on. Awesome, love that. Um, that's a good like segue too. So, what is community? Like, how would you define it? Yeah, a big question. Um, it is a big. It is a big question. Um, but it's something that I am. I think we all are really passionate about here. Um, I think community is just anyone who is willing to help. Um, anyone who is willing to lean on each other and ask for help and offer help. Um, our community here. Um, in like the Chittenden County, Grand Isle County area are amazing. Um, they are selfless and strong and it's been such a pleasure to work with them um, this past year and moving forward. Everyone is just, I don't know, just always willing to help um, even <laughs> when it means bringing us a stray cat that is someone's outside cat. It always is just out of the goodness of people's hearts. Um, which is really, really special, and I think that's something that's definitely unique to this area. Yeah, animals really bring it out of people. Yeah, they really do. Um, 
It's kind of crazy. We work with, I mean, not crazy, but we work with a lot of shelters down south because their populations are so large and they're animal shelters. Um, and here up in you know, Vermont, sometimes it's, it's difficult for us to even cat, keep cats on the adoption floor because they just fly out of here, um, which is really amazing. Um, it also gives us the opportunity to work with those shelters who do have that overpopulation um, and really lend a hand um, and help those guys find homes just a little bit quicker. That's great. Yeah, a lot of my pets have been rescued from the cell. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, it really is. It just goes to show that, you know, asking for help is never a bad thing. Um, you kind of answered this a little bit already, but like, what does HSCC add to the community? Yeah, um, I think we add a really wonderful resource to our community. Not only do we have our shelter here that works hands on in like surrender prevention, helping people keep their animals, um, with things like our free food shelf and like our community pet clinic, which honestly has some of the most accessible pricing and any vet I really have ever seen. Um, even our own staff members will go there because you cannot beat the pricing. Um, or our vets, I mean, they're absolutely top notch. Our um, veterinarian, Carrie, literally does the like most tiny sutures. It's like you can't even see it for like span and neuter incisions. Um, she's brilliant. Um, she literally did a mass removal on a rat the, this earlier this week. And this rat, you know, it's like this big. Yeah. And the mass that came out of it was ginormous. But the rat, you know, which some people probably wouldn't take the risk um, or the time, but she did. And like the, she, and the rat's doing so well. Like we check on her every day. Her incision is amazing. But regardless of that, um, I think that HSCC just provides like a lot of resources and education um, and like especially with our programs we I think that we really do help save a lot of lives both human and animal which is like the most important thing. I'm just gonna make sure everything's still going yeah. properly. Sorry I'm like move around a lot. My is totally fine. I have it on like the autofocus setting. Oh great! <laughs> like, um, what do you enjoy outside of work? I know. Hanging out with my own animals. <laughs> um, uh, I love, you know, going back to the community. I am, uh, you know, I lean a lot on my own support system to kind of help uh, with everything that I do here. Um, so it's, you know, I hang out with friends and my partner and our own animals. Um, I love to cook. Uh, so I love like going home and like just like kind of doing something with my hands where I don't have to think about it. Um, like hiking and camping, which I also do with my coworkers. Sometimes, like a couple weeks ago, we all took a camping trip, like literally in the middle of the week, and we all rolled through the next day, and we're so tired, but we had so much fun. Um, yeah, just really being outside and just like being in nature and enjoying the world. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's great. What do you have for pets? Um, I have one dog and three cats, two of which are from here. Um, my first rescue was this 12 year old um, senior lady um, who was really, really crabby and like no one could touch her for like her first week here. Um, but I like went down to her enclosure every day and I like worked with her um, and now she is like the most social, friendly, like lovely lady in the world. Yes, I love her very much. But yeah. That is so cute. What are your pet names? Um, Rudy is my dog and then Salem, Philly Cheese Steak, and Zephyr are my cats. Nice. Those are great names. Is Salem a black cat? No, okay. she's um, she's like a tortoise, like Persian mix Aww. thing. She has like a, she's squishy. I love that. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna ask if she was named after Salem from Sabrina and the Teenage Witch. She just coincidence. Just coincidence. Um, she was m me and my partner's first cat. Um, a very long time ago, and he named her. Um, and it just. It just stuck. But everyone does ask if she was a black cat. <laughs> yeah, I used to love that show. Yeah. Um, this is one of the questions that I'm personally most curious about, is how do you balance the emotional toll that working with animals can take, especially animals that are like looking for homes? 
it's really hard. Um, it takes a lot of like transparency and like honesty. Like I said, I lean on my own support system, um, which includes people outside of work and inside of work um, quite often. Um, you know, it's it's so amazing being able to come here every day and like snuggle the cats and the dogs. Um, but it it does it takes a lot of um, energy and emotions because we are all so deeply passionate here. Um, so I I am always asking for help. I come home after a bad day and I'm like I need to go take a walk. I need to make dinner. Like I just need to do something to get myself out of my head. Um, and into my body and just kind of wipe my feet at the door in terms of what happened that day. Um, of course, it's really difficult to kind of explain everything that we go through here to people who don't go through it also, um, which is why our own like staff is a part of my community because we are just like so understanding that we have bad days, we have really hard, tough days, and no one else is really going to understand that, quite, quite like one another. Um, so, you know, sometimes we'll go out and have a beer, or go out to, like, the beach and just, like, hang out and just, like, talk it out. Um, because, like, while, you know, during the day, like, during, while we're here, we can operate and keep going and do our daily tasks, but... It's when you kind of sit at home and like you think about it that it really does that it really does stick with you, um, which is honestly kind of why I love everyone who I work with because whether it's like our like bosses or like even our CEO constantly checks in on us just to be like, are you okay? Do you need anything? Is there anything I can do for you? It's just like those basic questions. Um, and just really giving people space to process and like verbalize that, you know, no, I'm not okay. And the, and the response to that is, okay, why don't you go home? And so it's, it's very understanding. Um, so it's, it's hard, but it's honestly worth it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I, that was like one of my biggest questions because I feel like a lot of people who are animal lovers, including me, might like shy away yeah. from that kind of work or like volunteering because it's like, so emotional you want to take every animal home like it's so I mean like I'm the person like scrolling through TikTok and when I, every time I see a shelter video I'm like in tears I, yes yeah. <laughs> but like it's a really good point that like it is worth it yeah it's so worth it. yeah it really is worth it and like while you know it's not for everyone I mean you know it's it's heartbreaking, it really can be. Um, we do a lot of medical and behavioral rehabilitation here, and the risk of that is that sometimes that rehabilitation work doesn't work out. Um, and we do, you know, have to like think about their quality of life and what's gonna be the most comfortable for them. And that's really difficult, especially when you're medicating these animals every single day and are rooting for them, but you do you do have to kind of take a step back and think okay like while we are medicating them we are saving them what is their outlook going to be after this are they going to be comfortable um are they going to be able to you know be happy and enjoy what life they have left um and i think that honestly sometimes is a gift yeah. being able to give them that relief oh that was Hi, Alden. <laughs> She's like, enough of this. It's she's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> she was looking at you for a second before she jumped down. Oh, she's so cute. I know. <laughs> um, yeah, those are all really great points. Um, tell me a bit about some of the services and programs you guys offer, especially those that target like underserved populations that you mentioned. Yes, I love our programs and yeah. services. I was going through the website and there was like so many. There's like, I have to ask so about many. This. Um, yeah, it's really, you know, going back to that question about community, it's something that we are, so our programs and services um, include everything from a food shelf that's here in our shelter um, that has free food, supplies, um, gear, everything from like pee pads to like pet shampoo, treats, um, harnesses and leashes, even like smallie supplies. Um, 
Then we'll have, um, we have a temporary boarding program that works with people who are currently going through crisis, such as either being unhoused or fleeing a domestic violence situation. Uh, we work with their caseworker to determine um, length of stay and a plan for after their stay here at the shelter. Um, and we'll house them, we'll love on them, we'll care for them. Um, that does include medical treatment as well, so updates on vaccines, spaying and neutering for free, um, all of that good stuff. Um, sometimes the animals will stay with us, but um, it is always, uh, you know, an honor to be able to care for people's animals who are suffering. Um, we do a lot of surrender prevention, so um, what that means is you know, obviously when people can no longer care for their animals or if they are struggling themselves, um, we will take their animals in and are so grateful that they can trust us. Um, it really is one of the most selfless choices that people can make is putting their animals care into complete strangers um, and trusting that we are going to love them, which we absolutely do. Um, so, and you know, Part of that is working to kind of prevent that surrender. So we have our community pet clinic, uh, which like I said, offers really great um, pricing and services. Uh, the free shelf. Um, we have a couple of like financial uh, surrender preventions that if people are seen through our pet clinic um, and require a certain amount of surgery. Thank you. <laughs> She's like, I'm just going for it. Um, I'm sorry, move too fast, move too quick. Um, if um, um, if people, um, so yeah, so we can cover a certain part of their financial um, aspect um, in terms of like if it needs surgery or just medication. Um, we also have a community like pharmacy that people can access to for like different kinds of medications and prescription food. Um, it's all just really, really great. Um, we work with, you know, so many different housing authorities and community services um, that honestly I really do feel like we are a community service um, and a part of like that social working community to help um, everyone who is struggling. Um, as I am sure you know, uh, the housing crisis right now in uh, the area is absolutely abhorrent. Um, we are taking in emergency animals where landlords are pretty much giving our community members less than 24 hours. Um, and we are frustrated and um, are trying our best. Uh, you know, we understand that everyone, you know, is doing is also doing their best, um, but it's it's pretty heartbreaking. Um, that's where most of our um, owner relinquishments come from is housing issues. Um, it's, I wish I was more surprised. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I wish that more people were more surprised, but it's, it's just heartbreaking. Um, and people who love their animals so, so much have to choose between housing and their animals, often losing both. Um, so yeah, so really anything that we can do, we kind of like go through a roster um, of what do you need, how can we help, pretty much anything that we can do to keep your animals with you, because really a, <laughs> um, a happy like community really is like happy animals, and yeah. it's, it's really important. You're drooling! Ew! <laughs> I think she's enjoying. She is. She loves it. Hi, Olive. Yes, you good girl. I love her paws too. Her little paws. God, she's yeah. so good. Yeah. Little, yeah, you little fluffy paws. Um, so you said you're involved in social media too. So how do you guys use social media to make connections and benefit? Yeah. Um, so obviously social media is a really great tool um, for reuniting like lost pets um, with their owners. Like I said, strays that are outside cats. Um, social media is a really wonderful tool to help um, reunite lost animals with their owners. Um, so we always, you know, refer to like lost and found animals of Vermont's Facebook page, front porch forum. We post pictures of stray animals on our own website. Um, 
you know, just kind of hoping to get the word out and helping people, like, you know, realize that I went, who has their animals, things like that. Um, so that's a really big part. Um, we also really use social media, I think, to kind of be tongue-in-cheek about some of our more challenging friends in terms of placements. Um, we will make really, really silly reels to kind of highlight their quirks in a more positive and um, understanding way, such as if friends need to be like the only animal in the home, um, we'll be very honest and understanding and being like, this is like a friend that needs to be the king of his own castle. Like he does not want to share you with anybody. and. Um, we kind of use that language um, to be like, you know, not everyone, not every one of our friends is going to be the easiest placement, mm -hmm. um, but we really kind of lean into that kind of campy, cheeky aspect of social media. Um, That's great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one of my dogs is, um, is a reactive dog, and like no one can come in our house. But it was yeah. like if we don't have him, like no one else. Exactly. Would, like, and he's a seizure dog. He has it all right. working against him, but it's like, if you can give them the home, yeah, and not all, most of them aren't easy. No, most of them aren't easy, um, and I think that's also a really awesome thing that we do on social media is provide that educational aspect in a way that's not scary. Um, so like, you know, talking to people about reactive dogs and being, and like, you know, how trendy off-leash can be, but how dangerous it really can be, and kind of spinning that in a very positive way. Like, yes, those Instagram pictures look so good of your dog at the top of that mountain, but think about a friend who's enjoying his hike with his human, who just wants to be alone, and having an off-leash dog approach him, that's gonna ruin his whole day. Um, and kind of using that narrative of um, reframing people's perspectives and understanding of things like that um, to a much more community-based thinking. Um, so yeah, so I think it's we're pretty we're pretty unhinged. All of the staff has access to the Instagram stories, um, so they are we are we have fun. <laughs> we have fun with the Instagram stories. Um, but I mean, people will come in. I mean, one of our volunteers adopted a cat because of this really funny picture that I took of him and I put it on our Instagram story. Um, and uh, he was like, that picture was so silly. Like his legs look so small. I ha like my wife was like, you need to come like, I need to come meet this cat. <laughs> and I was like, yes. Um, you know, it's, it makes everything a little bit more enjoyable and lighter in terms of like thinking about um, sheltering and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. The Instagram's great. I've peeked at it before. <laughs> Unhinged. <laughs> and, uh, it allows people to connect with you guys too. Oh my gosh, yes. It's, it's such a great and like direct access to us. Like people can send us questions, ask us like whatever they have, like anything like that, send pictures and updates. Um, yeah, it's an amazing tool just to connect a little bit more intimately. Um, it allows people to just like ask questions um, and get in touch with us. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. Oh, she's just having a day. Oh my god, she's like, I gotta get my belly now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, um, you've covered this a little bit. You've covered a lot of my questions before I even asked them. Um, but like, what is the value of accessible pet education? Um, it's everything. Um, it kind of like I said, having access to animal welfare education means that our community is happier and healthier along with the animals that they have. Um, we, a part of our counseling sessions, um, when we kind of go over that behavioral medical information is how we take care of our friends here and just educating um, people on practices, things that um, we def like things that we don't recommend or encourage um, that can sometimes be a little bit touchy or um, you know faux pas, but we always want to um, never lead with judgment, always lead with understanding um, and just really creating that open line of communication. Um, just because things change, you know? Um, when I was growing up, everyone declawed their cats. Um, now you'd be hard 
pressed to find a vet that would do that. Um, and it has nothing to do with people wanting to harm their animals. Um, it just has everything to do with understanding what that practice does to those animals. Um, so, and so it's kind of just really, like I said, not judging, just understanding um, and just trying to offer better options um, and work with our community who's like, well, I, you know, I love my furniture and that is fine. I love my furniture too. Let's talk about cat scratchers. Let's talk about um, nail caps. Let's talk about bringing your cat to the vet every week to get, or our community pet clinic to get their nails trimmed for $10. Like, let's do that. Let's talk through these options instead of us being like, no, you can't take this cat home. Because really, we think that if anyone wants an animal and wants to care for an animal, they should be able to. Um, and that's, you know, again, what our programs and services offer. Um, that food, those um, gear, things like that, just really making sure that people can can't care for their animals. Couch covers. Couch yeah, covers. Yeah. Love it. My family has so many couch covers. So many couch we covers. You can get, I'm sorry. You can get like, um, like couch, like adhesive scratchers. Oh, oh that's cool. I and know. I think they're scratching the Exactly. Couch. It's, uh, there's so many different options mm -hmm. and like that's really what we're here to like go through. Never to like shame or judge or anything like that. Um, so yeah. Amazing. Um, so it's Tecla, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. And what pronouns do you use? Uh, she, they. Okay, perfect. Um, who is Tecla? How do you define yourself? Oh, I knew this question was going. <laughs> I really hate it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> passionate people always have such an easy time talking about like the organization they're a part of. Yeah. They come to themselves and they're like. <laughs> yes, like I could talk about, I do, I talk about like the shelter to anyone who will listen when I'm not here and then you ask me that question and I'm like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, um, I guess Tekla is um, passionate, sometimes to a fault. Um, my passion can get a hold of me um, and I can get a little too passionate about things. Um, but really, I think that I am just a person who cares um, about our community and about our community's animals. Um, and I was tired of not making a difference. Um, and I wanted to actually help and see that change in the world. Um, so I guess that I am just an animal lover with <laughs> Not a lot else to do, <laughs> but um, I don't know. I don't know. I guess that's, I, I really guess I just define myself with my work here and my passion for our community um, and like every aspect of just wanting to help. Um, don't get me started on uh, some of the other topics that are inflicting our community right now, but it's, but it is, it's just a lot of passion and a lot of caring. Well, that's yeah. a great answer, considering you're <laughs> so scared. It's a great answer. I was nervous, Olive. I was nervous. I was like, don't worry. Um, what's most important to you? Like, in general? Like, to me? Like, to you. Um. That's yeah. another, another big one. <laughs> Um, and I, I think you have answered this a little bit. In other yeah, I mean, I guess like what's mo yeah, what's most important to me really is like a happy and healthy community and world, and um, that everyone just really treats each other with kindness and empathy and understanding. Um, I think that you know a lot of people come to us. Um, not really knowing what they want or what they need and sometimes that really is just having someone listen to them um, and if I can do that that's great if they need something else I'm gonna try and do whatever I can so I guess that really is it really is just like helping um, as much as we can 
just trying to be like open and understanding and just non-judgmental. A safe place to land, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. It intertwines a lot with how you define it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, what do you most want other people to know and understand about you and about HSCC? Um, they can be two separate answers, one, whatever works for you. Uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll stick to the what people want to know about HSCC. <laughs> um, no, um, I mean, I think with like anyone who works in animal welfare, you, we really just want people to kind of like understand that um, it's a community effort and we have to do it all together um, and that, you know, we do see a lot of really, really difficult things, um, situations, events, um, outcomes, but we still show up every day. Um, we're still here um, and we want to still be here for our community, for everyone to, you know, come and say hello, even if it's just walking through the lobby. I mean, we have regulars that will literally just bring the staff snacks and take a walk through the lobby. Her name is Emma Sarge and she is amazing. You do not have to use her name, but Snack Fairy keeps us going. And she's just someone who is always just like, how are you guys? And we're like, we're good. Kind of, we're, you know what? Actually, we're okay. We're okay. It's the end of the day. We're ready to go home. But, um, but we really are, I mean, we show up every day and like if you need us, we're there. Um, and I guess that is something about myself as well, is just like always being there to help um, or just listen, really. Oh yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add that I didn't ask about that you feel like is important to know or you wanted to talk about? Yes, actually, yes, I do. Um, so, um, all of our food here at the shelter is donated. Um, every single thing that we feed our animals with and pretty much use is donated. Um, so, if there is like, you know, that half empty bag of cat food, like bring it to us. If we can't use it, we can give it to our community. Um, that goes with like pretty much any kind of other pet supplies. Um, towels, dish, or like old dishes, linens, things like that. Um, we can always use, um, you can always give us a call if you don't know. Um, but we are always open for donations, um, if not just for us, for our community as well. Um, it was pretty impactful after the flood, actually. People were calling us and saying, hey, I don't know how I can help, but can I bring you guys a bag of dog food? And we were like, yep, it's gonna go right onto the food shelf. Um, it was, yeah, I mean, it was amazing. Um, again, really just highlighting how essential our community is and really not isolating ourselves. Um, but yes, that is something that I wanted so, to That's say. awesome that it's a full circle. Yes, yes, it, it really is. Because yeah. uh, we literally wouldn't be able to function without our community and without their selflessness. Um, both with our animal population and our donations. So it's just... We feel very, very lucky that people trust us so much. Um, and we definitely like to, you know, prove to them that it's it's for a good reason. And are there any upcoming, like, community events you wanted to plug? Yeah, so um, we just won Best Nonprofit. Oh, that's how I found you guys, Second actually. year in a row, yes! Um, I went through when I was looking for, like, people. I was like, who do I interview? Like, what's the best way to, like, expand, like, people I already, outside of people I already, like, know of? Yes. I went through all of, like, the winners from last year yes. and all the nominations for this year, so it feels really appropriate that you guys won again. We were so jazzed. Um, of course, every single nonprofit to be nominated um, with is amazing and you know, sometimes at the end of the day, we feel a little bit silly um, to be a winner, but we really are so excited. So we are celebrating as a staff tonight at the Seven Daisies party. Um, not like this will go out before then, maybe yeah. it will, but whatever. Um, and then we do have um, a community event that is summer specific uh, for beer lovers and dog lovers. Um, it's called Bark and Brew, um, and it's on every... 
I don't think it's every other Thursday, but on selective Thursdays throughout the summer, um, we have our big dog play yard open for all of our community members. Um, we have beer and food and community gatherings. Um, it's one of the staff's most favorite events. Um, it's wonderful. Um, it's really, really good. So we do have that, which we would love to see people at. Um, even if you don't have a dog, you can just come out and hang out with dogs and see some friends. <laughs> but yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for thank talking you. to me and giving me your time. Yeah. It was really nice to talk to you. Yeah. You're so like lovely and animated. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know who I was talking to before I got here today, but Jenna, Jenna knew what she was doing. Yes, she does. Um, I, yes, I have a very extensive theater background. Oh, yeah. So we, um, I do the news segment, actually. Oh for WCAX, like, Pets with Potential every Friday. And so Jenna was like, no, we're going to get you out here. Hey, what are you doing Friday morning? <laughs> like, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, thank you so much for even thinking of us. We, we, love, we love what we do.